Hey everybody, I'm Jer. Welcome to my YouTube. All right, so today I want to do a video on um, revenue multiples. I want to discuss how to figure out revenue multiples for a company, uh, what the revenue multiple is for a company. I also want to discuss when it matters, why it matters, and when it doesn't matter. Um, so let's start off. We're going to do revenue multiples uh, for uh, DoorDash. Okay. So we're going to go uh, to, uh, you can Google finance or go to google.com uh, slash finance and look up uh, in their search uh, dash. So if you go to google.com slash finance and uh, you can look up either DoorDash or you can look up just by their symbol, uh, uh, dash. Uh, we'll go ahead and do DoorDash right here. Okay. Uh, it shows what they were up most recently or down most recently, depending on the stock. Um, their previous close, their day range, uh, their year range, 110 to 257. Their market cap, which is what they are uh, valued at uh, according to the free float of the company, the amount of uh, <clears throat> available shares, uh, so shares outstanding, uh, times the uh, price by which they are uh, trading, which is this number here, 153.68. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, if you scroll down further here, you can get their revenue by quarter or you can do their annual uh 2018 2019 2020 i will do it by quarter because this is the most uh recent <clears throat> okay we will go we'll start with december 2020 their revenue was 970 970 million march 2021 their revenue was uh, one billion eight million. Okay. All right, nine seventy, nine hundred seventy million plus one billion eight million. Okay, plus one billion two hundred and forty million. Plus one billion two hundred eighty million, and you end up with uh, approximately four point five billion dollars. Okay, so you would take that. You would then take the market cap, which is fifty two million. Or fifty two billion, sorry, uh, seven hundred and twenty million mm. Where are we at here? All right, so that's five zero 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 zero. Yeah, so we have 720 million, 52 billion, 720 uh, million. I just want to make sure we have that correct. And you're going to divide that by 4 million, or 4 billion, 498 million. 
Okay, make sure you have the zeros in the correct spot. So 498 million, 4 billion, 498 million. And then you're going to equal that. You have 11.72. So you have DoorDash trading at about 11.72 uh, multiple, revenue multiple. So the revenue multiple is 11.72. So that's how you figure out revenue multiple. Now then, that doesn't, that seems almost reasonable until you go to look at, you scroll down here. So what this means is that they are trading at 11 years of revenue. Now then, <clears throat> some people would be like, okay, well, that's not so bad. And I guess it, it's not like it's saying that the company is worth 11 years of revenue. But that's not profit. That is revenue. And I'm almost certain that the way that DoorDash does revenue is by saying, okay, we have our hands on this much money per quarter, like doing the quarterly uh, revenue. So they have their hands on $1.28 billion, which sounds great, okay? Um, and then you take into consideration that they are handling business, like they are a third party to like McDonald's or Burger King or um, other restaurants that are using DoorDash for delivery. Also other businesses like Walmart or... Um, Target or, you know, I don't know who all DoorDash, I know DoorDash does deliveries for uh, Walmart grocery, which also, they also do deliveries for like Walmart Hardline's goods uh, that are deliverable. So um, you're saying this is how much money they had their hands on, but it's not how much money they made. So they are kind of taking the revenue that Walmart makes from deliveries with DoorDash and saying they made it, but they didn't. So their profit on that, if you look at it, they revenue was $1.28 billion but they lost 101 million. Their cost of revenue is 585 million. So the cost to make 1.28 in revenue was $585 million. They, their net income, they lost 101 million. So, while, yes, they're trading at 11.72 times revenue, that's not profit. So the, the problem becomes, you go back here, 312 million, 110, oh, why is this not, 312 million, 110, 102 and 101. They lost 625 million. <clears throat> so if we are 600, they lost 625 million dollars. So really, they're losing money like crazy, almost, well, I mean, they lost $625 million. Um, so their revenue looks really great, like, except for, I think it might even be decreasing. No, slightly up, just slightly up on revenue. 
but the amount of money that they are losing, they are just like throwing away is insane. They're not making a profit. So really, this company shouldn't be trading at 11, nearly 12 times revenue. Honestly, because of how much they're losing, unless they can turn this around and start making a profit and income, they honestly shouldn't be trading at any times, like maybe one times revenue. But this is absurd for them to be trading at 11 times revenue whenever they are losing this much money a quarter and $625 million <clears throat> um, a year or for this last year. What did they lose there? Whew. I mean, they're losing less, which is great. But... Well, no. Yeah, so... Well, this year they own... That quarter they only lost 43 million only. The cost of revenue is going up. It's almost like some of these companies will try to make it look like they're doing great by making revenue go up. But and thinking that maybe people won't notice where their revenue is coming from, which is basically just piggybacking off of other companies' revenue. Um, just because money hits hands twice doesn't mean that mean that they did so much better. Um, like just because I had like. You're still losing money. <laughs> so I just don't. And there's a lot of companies like this that are losing money like crazy. But they're covering it up because they're making more revenue. Like 45%. But their income is taking a big hit. And so they hide behind this revenue while losing hundreds of millions of dollars. And it's ridiculous. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. So DoorDash to me should be... They've gone down a lot. Like, I had talked about them earlier. Um, earlier this month. About how this price was ridiculous. I still think it's pretty ridiculous. And I still think they have more to fall off of this even in my opinion, unless they can figure out some way to make profit. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, see, this was insane. They should be probably closer down to here, honestly. Yeah. I think they still have further to fall. But I think whenever you are looking to um whenever you're looking to get into a company, a lot of people will be like, "Oh, well, I use this company a lot. I'm just going to throw my money at it and that'll be okay." And sure, Okay, uh, but the thing is, is that just because you use a company a lot doesn't mean that you just throw your money at it and buy their stock just because you use the company a lot. You should first, like you would do anything before getting into a stock, you want to see if there's value in it. You want to see if, okay, is this a good buy? Just because... I like uh, because I love pizza doesn't mean that I'm going to whenever I'm finding out that a pizza is a thousand dollars per pizza 
I'm just going to be like, yeah, well, I like the pizza, so I'm going to go and buy it. I'm going to actually figure out, okay, no. Like, no, I can get pizza for $20. I'm going to get the $20 pizza instead of the $1,000. Like, you're not just going to throw money at something just because you use it or because you like the brand. Like, But I think this is where it, there's been a, a big mess up in stocks is that people will buy stocks and companies. You know, you always hear, oh, well, you want to invest in companies that you love. Yes, but you're not going to buy into a company that is trading at 10 or 20 or 30 times revenue just because you like it. Does the company have something going on that makes it worth that? Are they going to be able to to fill that? Like to be able to fill those shoes of trading at, you know, 10, 20, 30 times revenue. And most of the time, no, they're not. Sometimes they will because you know that they have something great in the future that is going to make them more profitable than what they are now. But a lot of times, no, they're not going to fill that. And they just have people throwing money at it just because they like the brand. And I think that's bad. Um, and I think that's going to come back to bite a lot of people is that people are throwing money at these companies, uh, buying the stock just because it's a brand they love. And eventually fundamentals are going to matter again. Maybe they won't matter as much as they should, but they're going to matter again. And whenever that happens, people are going to get out and you're going to end up losing money because you bought way up here at this revenue multiple. Um, and it should have been trading down here at this revenue multiple, you know, five times, you know, yes, they can make five times revenue, like five years worth of revenue. They're worth five years of what the revenue is not 10 times or 20 times, 20 years worth of revenue. Um, yeah. So you have to take that into consideration. The time that I think revenue doesn't matter as much is if you are getting into a stock that you're trading and you're paying closer attention to technicals and like the um, chart for a stock uh, and how it's going. Uh, it matters less then because you're in and out and you're done, like whatever. Um, so trading, trading, I think fundamentals matter, but I don't. They don't matter as much, um, and definitely like revenue multiples aren't going to matter as much. They still matter, but they matter less. Now then, if you can find a stock to trade that fundamentals are good, the chart looks good, technicals look good. That's perfect. Like, that's great to get into. Um, now then, when revenues really, really don't matter is like whenever you're looking at a stock that um, that people are using the argument, oh, well, this rev these revenues are extreme. I'm going to short it. Okay, you have enough people shorting a stock. That's kind of a flag for day traders to be like, okay, they're shorting it. Let's make the stock price go up higher to even more extreme revenue multiples because there's all these people shorting the stock because it's already shot up. We're going to squeeze them and make the stock even go higher. And that's when revenues don't really matter because everything is just off the table. Like it doesn't even matter. Um, so if you can find a stock like that, um, in my opinion, revenues matter even less because you have people shorting it based off of, okay, well, yeah, this stock is trading at 100 times revenue, but that's the point. And so people are like, oh, well, this is going to come down off of this. And you have enough of those people saying, this is going to come off of this, I'm going to short it. And it's flagging people who are like, okay, we have a lot of shorts coming in here. We can push this stock even higher and they're going to have to cover which is going to make 
they're, which means that they're going to have to buy back what they're shorting, which is going to make the stock even go higher. And then you can have even more people jumping in and being like, oh, well, there's, there's no way this is going to go higher. I'm going to short it from here. And then more people even get in from there because they see that there's a lot of more short. It's just crazy. It's crazy. So that's another time that revenue does not matter. But uh, revenue does and should matter for companies that you're thinking of investing in. Um, and then you still want to have a target price that you get out at that you say, okay, yeah, they're they're trading. If they ever get to trading at 15 times revenue, I'm going to get out because it's not likely that they're going to continue to grow from here or whatever, or you know something about the company. So you want to set a target price still, even if you're investing um, and revenues are low or uh, revenue multiples are lower, not revenue, but revenue multiples are lower. You're going to want to set a target price to get out with that. So um, revenue multiples matter. And that's how you figure them out is you do uh, market cap divided by revenues. And if you can find stocks that are trading at one times revenue and making a profit, um, those are undervalued a lot of times. And you see that there's growth potential and they've invested into their future. Yeah, those stocks a lot of times are would be considered undervalued and they're great investment opportunities. So, um, But pay attention to that whenever you're looking at any stock to invest in is the revenue multiple and can they fill those shoes? And if not, then avoid it and find some other stock that you buy a lot of like their product or whatever and their revenue multiples aren't some extreme number. Uh, you'll be better off and you'll be thankful and hopefully message me and thank me, <laughs> uh, message me and say, hi, <laughs> thanks for this advice. Uh, it helped a lot. So, um, I hope it does help somebody. I hope it helps you, um, with finding stocks to invest in. Okay. I love you all so much. I will see you very soon. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. I will see you all uh, very soon. Love you. Bye.